Now then people and welcome back to the Just Joe football show. It feels good to be back and obviously it's game day today as well and it's the big one. It's Clash of the Titans, Clash of the Top 2, the big boys in the EFL Championship, both vying for promotion to the Premier League. I think it's safe to say Leicester have got that locked off, no problems there. But win tonight for Leeds United and maybe the league title isn't just done yet. They currently have a nine-point gap over Dirty Leeds, but if we win tonight at Ellen Road, up against or with the help of a vociferous crowd, Enzo Maresca has been stoking the fire, saying, you know, it's a big game for them, not for us. Just a normal game for us. Well, let's see how that works out for him tomorrow night. Fingers crossed, Leeds United are on the right side of it. Look, it's a must-not-lose for me. Of course I want us to win the game. We just must not lose. Um, but do I want to win? Of course, man. Three points against top of the table. Doing the double over them. Two losses on the spin. Could it be classed as a blip? They need to then make sure if they were to lose this game, they win every game. Because for me, if we come through this unscathed, I'm thinking... No team wants to play Leeds United. Is it any wonder, you know, the form that we're on right now is scintillating. We've won eight consecutive league games. Eight consecutive league games since the turn of the year. And had seven clean sheets within that time. We have the best home record in the division. We're looking to go the full season undefeated. How sweet would that be? Remember Arsenal had that sort of like Invincibles gold trophy? Just give us the EFL championship trophy with like some sort of like gold half or something like that it'd be nice as well because obviously there's Leicester fans there still looking at maybe that points record we can have a say in that regardless of what happens if we don't get the league and they don't drop enough points but if we can stop them getting the points record or at least put a dent or a nail in the coffin then that'd be nice as well, to go through a full campaign, or at least up until this point, and still be undefeated at home, it ain't no mean feat, it ain't easy, it ain't easy, and Daniel Farker's got Leeds United cooking on gas, you know, I've said before, it's almost like we're building to a crescendo, he's been there, he's done it, you know, he, he designed the t-shirt, if you need a man to get you out of this division, it's him, he told us for quite some time now, you know, look at the table at game 40, there's still a long way to go for that. But everything he's set up until this point has worked, you know. I'll be real. You've got every single man and his dog talking about Leeds United in this division right now. Connor Chaplin's talk, chatting beans, even though we slapped eight past them. You've got the new Huddersfield boss barking all over the shop about Leeds United. Why? I do not know. And Enzo Maresca in his presser saying, listen, it's just a normal game for us. That's BS. That is BS. Because you know... If Leeds United beat Leicester and Enzo Maresca, it will set the cat amongst the pigeons. I would love nothing more than an early goal for Leeds United because, as we know, no other team's got a better record than Leeds United. When we go in front first, we very rarely lose. If we lose all this season, I'm not too sure. Fact check me. I don't want people clipping this up because I might have got something wrong. But I'm going to say with chest, we go in front, we win games. So if we get an early goal... Because the pressure is going to be on them. More so them than Leeds, I feel. Even though we're the chasing team, just because the crowd's going to be so up for this. Every tackle, every corner, every you know free kick that goes Leeds United's way is going to be met by a raucous crowd. So, and Enzo hasn't helped that. If anything, he's stoked that. You know, the team talk's done. Not just from him, but from the rest of the division chatting beans about Leeds United right now. So I just feel that we're a bit like an unstoppable train. You know, an immovable object. And the Foxes stand in the way. And I feel that they'll be neutered. I'm nervous about the game, of course I am. But I think we can win. Yes, I do. I think we could get another clean sheet. We managed to do it at their place. We managed to do it at their place. And we're now at home. So... Why not a repeat? I'd like more goals, but I'd take 1-0. I'd... Mad thing is, I'd probably take a draw. You know, I have to be careful here. I probably would take a draw because it's a must-not-lose. And you are playing, as per the table, the best team in the division. I don't agree with that, but, you know, does the table lie? I'm not sure. But right now, they're the best team in the EFL. That's why at the top of it. It ain't going to be an easy game, but it's one that I think we can win. How do we win the game? Well, 
Listen, I've watched Leicester a few times this season. Similarly to Southampton, it's a patient build-up from the back. It's slow, it's laborious, it's methodical. The over 90 minutes can beat the majority of teams in this division just due to the quality of players that you have at your disposal. However, Leicester are going to be trying to play this certain way against a team that are of a similar level, or if not better, in my opinion. I think our midfield is better than their midfield. And look, look, Ndidi being out is a massive loss for Leicester. Who will it be? I would argue probably Dewsbury Hall, Winks and Dennis Pratt, potentially. But I back Kamara and Gruyev with the form that they're in at the minute, being able to boss that. And then at the back, you have Rodon and Ampadu. Again, imperious. Like a Welsh brick wall, the great wall of Rodon. You know, so I just feel with that, Quintet there, quartet, I don't know, maths, is it maths, is it English, I don't know, but that four piece there, let's go with that, with that four piece, they'll win that battle, you know, of Jews Hall dropping in, you know, in between the in between the lines in the house, but I, I just feel that they will deal with that, now, as I said, patient possession build up, with the goalkeeper Hermanson joining the back line at times, with then Pereira normally dropping in, as an inverted fullback to normally like form a double pivot with Harry Winks. But when this is all going on, what I will say, I believe the press will catch them out. I think Leeds United's press right now is the best it's been all season. Remember, early parts of the season, Farkas talking about Pirro, can't press as well as Rutter, and we're all going, well, where's the press? I don't see no buttons being pressed. However, over the last few weeks, that has just come on leaps and bounds. We've seen us catch a number of defences now trying to play with this patient build-up or even just playing out from the back. I just think because of how slow and laborious as Leicester's backline can be with regards to the way that they do build up, that when we do press, we could get joy. And I've said, look, a lot of Leeds fans really rate Hermanson. I hear it. You know, is he better than Melier? I'm not too sure. Has he been better than Melier this season? Then yes. But what I will say is kicking isn't always the best. He gave us a few opportunities last time at bloody Filbert Street or Leicester City's ground, whatever it's called these days, the Gary Lineker bloody Walker Stadium, whatever you like. But yeah, I, I think the press will cause them all sorts of problems. And I could see an early goal. I genuinely could see an early goal within the first 15 minutes. And guess what? No team scored more goals than Leeds United than in that first 15 minutes. Correct me if I'm wrong, it's almost double what second has scored within that time. So, you know, if we do start well and start fast and press them high when they have that ball and we do get an early goal, then I feel it could be a long night for Leicester and for Maresca. And the crowd, trust me, the crowd will remind you, will remind him what he was saying in his pre-match presser. So I think that's how we can win this game. Of course, there are key personnel for Leeds United that need to be on their A game in order for Leeds United's press to work effectively and for them to take the chances. Now, look at that front three behind Pirro. I think it'll be Pirro. Bamford's a doubt, but he's not ruled out. But I don't think he starts him. I don't think he throws him straight in. He will be on the bench. He'll look to be brought on if it isn't working with Pirro. And of course, you know, I think he usurps Matteo Joseph in that. And I think we're all OK with that. But that three behind Pirro of Rutter, who is alongside Dewsbury Hall for me as one of the best creators in the division. And the wingers, the wingers, OK, Mavadidi got locked up by Luke Aileen. Fatou is a danger, did cause us problems in the reverse fixture, but he's up against a better Furpo this time. But Somerville, Nonto, Rutter, Cooks. Cooks, and I think if they're on their A game, which I expect them to be, let's not forget we had Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know, you know, happy days, Sundays, happy days, it'll be there for you, something like that. Those days are us. He's actually a Leeds fan as well, is that Henry, Win Henry Winkler? So big up to Henry Winkler, by the way. But yeah, we had such a, such a, built up fixture congested time and we've actually had a break and Daniel Farker spoke about releasing the load on the players if anything Maresca's ramped this up Farker as all season has just been sat there cool card collected like tranquillo tranquillo you know what I mean so um I think these players are going to be well up for this game and I do think we will win the game but look it ain't going to be easy let's look I think Loki Ricardo Pereira 
has been arguably Leicester City's best player, or at least one of. Of course, Jusby Hall gets all the headlines. We know about Jusby Hall. We know about Harry Winks, but look out for Ricardo Pereira. I think he's a top player. It's going to be interesting to see who he goes with up top. Is Jamie Vardy's in hot form right now, netting five goals across his last five appearances, four of them coming after half time by the way so just want to remind people that Leeds United need to be on it for the full 90 which I'm more than expect us to do but just back to that striker chat will it be Dakar will it be Vardy I just think you know and I've spoken offline about this but we know Jamie Vardy loves these type of fixtures do you know let's not forget I remember him celebrating against Crystal Palace giving it the old like an eagle and he's had a go at Sheffield United and that in the past. He's obviously Chef Wednesday fan and came through there before getting released. But he's a lad, he's a boy -o. So he he's the type of player that thrives on this. Could Dakar do I think Dakar's the better player or had the better season I do in the small amount of games he's got he's got decent goal contributions. Me and Locks had him leading the line in the combined one to eleven. But I think this could be a fixture for Vardy. So it will be interesting at 7 o'clock which way Maresca goes up top. But the rest of it, as I say, it'll probably be Pereira. You're looking at maybe Doyle or Justin on the other side. Woutfest, Vestergaard, Hermanson in goal. Winks, Dewsbury Hall, Pratt. Then probably Fatou, Mavadidi, Vardy or Dakar. Fatou, again, look, Mavadidi is good against lesser opposition for me. I think up against Archie Gray, locked him off last time. Luke Aileen locked him off last week. I expect Archie to do it again this time. Fatawu is a worry, though. And Juni Firpo's in great form and has improved defensively. But Fatawu's a totally different kettle of fish. So that's going to be an area that he needs support with. But he's going to get that with Kamara, with Gruyev and with Ampadu. I'm just so glad and Diddy's not fit. Back from AFCON, not fit and not ready to play in this game. He He's the big player for me. That, that will be missed. And Dennis Pratt, or if it's Makatia, whoever it may be, obviously, Kazadei went back to Chelsea. They're just not on the same level. And we've seen that in the reverse fixture when Kazadei came in. Kazadei did an interview and said, Kamara is the toughest player he's come up against in this division. You know, so he had a tough night. And I, I expect whoever comes in for, or whoever plays in that eight role instead of in Diddy, will also have a tough night because it ain't going to be easy for them. And I would argue... We will win that battle, as I said earlier on in the video. But this game, this game has will have, will have a significant impact on the race for promotion. Now, of course, if we were to lose, Ipswich win. They're three points in front of us with some very favourable fixtures. We also give a chance to Southampton to claw something back as well. So Leeds United, you know, whatever which way this goes, it will have a big impact. I mean, it, the less impact. I say the less impact if Leeds won because Leicester would still have to lose two games and could Leeds claw that back. But I guess if Leeds win, it also has a massive dent in Ipswich and Southampton's hopes because these fans that call us obsessed will all be watching Friday night and we'll all be in the watch long, no doubt, if we go behind saying, we're going to catch you, we're going to catch you, you know? Because we're all vying for them top two spots. No one wants the playoffs. I don't care that people think it's a different time and we could be good in the playoffs this time. I don't want them. Top two is for us. And I've said weeks ago now, I don't care for the league. Just get me up. And Fark has said as much. You know, it's all about being sustainable in the Premier League for Leeds United and also for him. He needs that as a manager as well. But best believe, if we do beat them, then the league's still on. The league's still on. Six points can be called back. And look, Leicester suffered a shock defeat last time out against Middlesbrough. 2-1 it was. I think that ended like a 10-game unbeaten streak. They have bounced back from this before. Obviously, the last two games they lost in consecutively was Leeds and Middlesbrough. It's quite interesting. But yeah, they, they'll obviously want to come back from that and look being at home or away doesn't really phase them i think they've won 12 out of 16 games away from home they're the best away form team in the league so they you know they're in this game i just think Leeds united's home form the record that we're on we've got to be the favorites are we the favorites you tell me are we the favorites in this game against top of the league and look if we did win if we did win obviously we've won the eight league games and all that stuff but if we did win it would be 12 consecutive games without defeat winning 10 and drawing one 12 games you know and let's not forget the last five have come to nil as well we haven't conceded a goal in five games scoring 11 in the process this is like no joke form you know it's almost fake form so Leicester know they have a game on their hands but i know we do as well right we know this 
we know we have a game on our hand. Look, Leicester have like one defeat in nine, I think, away from home. And that was against Coventry. But what I will say during that run, they only managed to keep two clean sheets. So Leeds United will score tomorrow. We're too good not to. The form is too hot not to burn. Do you see what I'm saying? So if we get one early, it could be a shutout. 2-3. Two, 2-3-0. Three. Two, three, the longer it goes on, we get one, they get one. I'm not, I'm not sure. They, if it, Look, they will concede. I don't know if I can say with chess that we will. Normally I call it, yeah, but five games without conceding, as good as Leicester are, we're impenetrable right now. So considering all that, I'm going to go for a 2-0 Leeds United win. We score within the first 15 to 20 minutes, we get one in the second half. Early doors, kill the game, Leicester, patient, passing, boring football like that. Oh, nick it off and call. You know what I mean? That's that's the kind of That's the kind of vibe I'm going for. I'm excited for it. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure you join me for the watch along as well, 7 p.m. live. It's going to be a good one. We'll have a post-match after it as well as we always do. It's exciting times and this could have a real swing. We might look back on this in game 46 and say, that was it, that was it that really that really won us the league. Yeah, imagine. Imagine if we won the league. <laughs> I can't lie, it'd be sweet. It would be sweet, but I'm not asked for it. Genuinely, I'm not. Like, just get me second. So just don't lose this game. But I do think we will win, and I'm gonna go for a two nil Leeds United win. Another win and another clean sheet. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Please smash a like on this video. Um, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell, and I'll see you tonight from seven. Peace out. Leeds, Leeds.